Giants. Uh, they're over under for the season six and a half wins. They needed offensive line help. They needed linebacker help. They needed edge rusher help. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, about their picks. Number four pick overall, they took Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. He was uh, widely regarded as the fourth of the of the top four, but they were all so similar that it just kind of depended I, on. I, I don't think that was a, a terrible pick I, at all. I don't all. know that, as much as I had him third. Yeah. I don't know that that was a knock because you're right. Yeah. There was such a minor separation, in my opinion, between the top three. Yeah, I, I agree. We've with been you. over that. Uh, Xavier McKinney dropped all the way to them at number 36. Uh, That's McKinney, insane. Yeah. That, this is the pick that I just couldn't understand. It's, and, him and, and, him and, and T. It, Higgins fallen when all the wide receivers yeah. that went before them and all the cornerbacks that went before them. I just don't understand. Either I don't know I don't know football, I don't understand the game the way I thought I did, or just a lot of people were dead-ass wrong. Yeah, and and – I mean, obviously, we will find out over the next couple of years. But uh, round, round three, they got tackle Matt Pert out of Connecticut. I I didn't watch a single UConn game last year. I can't get behind. This is where they lost me. I thought they did really good. They didn't cock up the first pick. That's fine. They hit a home run with the second pick. And then in the third round, Nothing they take another they tackle. they really did made sense to me. Not that any of these guys are all bad. They're probably fine. But none of them just blew my hair back. No. Look, they didn't uh, take a long snapper. They didn't take a punter. I, no. I, okay, but that's the only redeeming quality they have to me. Fourth round, they took cornerback Darnay Holmes out of UCLA. Uh, athlete could be pretty good. I mean, we'll see. Round five, uh, interior offensive lineman Shane Lemieux out of Oregon. Round six, uh, linebacker Cam Brown out of Penn State. Round seven, they had four picks in the seventh round. I was just about to say, these yeah. are all seventh round guys. And it's just flyers, right? So they yeah, took edge yeah. rusher Carter Coughlin out of Minnesota, who was actually pretty good for Minnesota last year. Uh, it, it, if if I know who a guy is and I was able to watch him make big-time plays uh, for Minnesota, then, yeah, that's that's a pretty big deal. Uh, yeah. But they obviously they watched Minnesota as well because they also took cornerback Chris Williamson from P.J. Flex team. They took linebacker T.J. Brunson from South Carolina and – Mr. Irrelevant linebacker Tay Crowder out of Georgia. Um, Crowder was good. They TJ went power five football, all defensive-minded guys. Well, I guess P.J. Yeah. Flex not, but Minnesota had a pretty good defense. Yeah, it was, um, it was all right. But, but, but Georgia and South Carolina dudes from really smart defensive coaches. So, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, I will say this. Uh, Andrew Thomas was the first-rated offensive tackle from Pro Football Focus uh, he had elite production against the best of the SEC. I mean, at LSU, Alabama, Florida, Auburn, like he he was fantastic against those teams. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, all, all of that makes sense. Safety wasn't a pressing need. When you when you got McKinney on the board and he fell that far, like that's a massive yeah. value pick. That's just a, that's just a don't yeah. mess it up. That's a that's a C.D. Lamb to the Cowboys. It's like, we weren't really wanting a receiver. We don't need a receiver or another skill guy, but we can't pass this up. Why would we do this? The Brown Yeti jumps in on YouTube. He said, him and Sweat will be a good team, I think. Um, okay. I, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but I'm... They I, just lost me with the... the I was... I was I kind of liked what they were doing, especially when they got uh, McKinney. And then everything else from there just became so – not that the draft is always about being sexy, but I I was just kind of blah. Third, third and fourth round, I was a little I, – like I, I'm still questioning those, but honestly – If a kid from UConn turns out to be a really good football player in the pros, I'm just going to be wrong. Yeah. That's fine. That's good. Congratulations. And I wish the kid the best. Listen, that was that was a bad football team. All ninety something athletes on that school couldn't play anywhere else. That's the reason they all went to UConn. I, yeah. It's hard for me to believe that pro on there. Rounds three and four, I did not like what they did. <laughs> Rounds one and two, and then five through seven, I love what they did. I thought yeah. they did pretty it's good. Okay, I guess it was okay. It's fine. So I, I'm, I'll I'll go with I liked their draft yeah. in this one. Yeah, it's it's okay with flyers. I'm okay with the flyers they took. Those guys could be good. And yeah. they could wash out. But that's what, listen, when you got four seventh round picks. That's what you do. We're, what, what are we talking about? You're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Yeah, 100%. 100%.
Uh, so let's let's go ahead and discuss for the NFC East uh, who won, who lost. Um, I hate to, it, I mean, the value that the Cowboys got. Uh, I I think I think they ended up a better team, and and it's not like they were a terrible team to begin with. Well, that's why um, I'm, I'm taking the draft alone. You can't take the team they had going into the draft. Yeah, yeah. Dra- draft alone, I'm going to take the Cowboys. So I think I'm going to – I think, and, and this could be just the dislike I have for the Cowboys speaking. That's fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I think I'm going to – we're splitting hairs here. They obviously had a very good draft. But I don't know that they did anything to have a good draft. The teacher gave them three of the answers, all right? Yeah. Elite guys fell to them that should have never fell to them. You didn't do anything right there. You just didn't do anything wrong. I think the skins, I think the skins actually had to make moves. They had to make picks, and and they had to strategize and build a board. The Cowboys had a board, didn't take anybody on their board because guys because everybody that fell they didn't to them. think were going to be available fell to them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. There's no skill in that. I, I Look, I— Take it one away from Jerry. Michael said, Jerry wins. Did you see that yacht? Yeah, 100%. We saw oh, well, the no. Yacht. Well, Jerry's <laughs> definitely winning that life, all right? Yeah, Did we love that Jerry. assistant that he's got that was handing him stuff? Yeah. And then Sir Dobby said, love it. Love it. Look, it was between the, the Redskins Bill. and the Cowboys for me. And the blue Bill. So, I, who do we think lost? We, we agree. Well, I'm going to—I definitively think the Eagles lost this draft. And this I, division— they're the loser of these four teams out of the draft. It, all right, so obviously the loser for me is between the Eagles and the Giants. I, I, I'm going to go with the Eagles because the top end talent, uh, they didn't get it, and I think the Giants, they they possibly got they two studs in the first two rounds. Now I like the Flyers that they took, but there's a good chance that that not. I'm, I, think, those, I think there's those, a chance none of those flyers pan out. A hundred percent of them washed. That happens all the time. My problem is there was top end talent there for the Eagles to go get. Yeah. If you trade Rager out for T. Higgins, what do you think right now? Because I think completely. Different. I think it's a, yeah. I think it's a whole different deal. I mean, just can't even fathom the difference. Yeah. That I in my opinion, this is my biases and my opinions, but I think T. Higgins is going to be a star. He's just he can do anything. He can do everything. There's nothing he's bad at. Yeah, Michael said uh, I'm gonna have to say Cowboys one. Cooper and Lamb is gonna be nice if Dak can hit him. Uh, but it, it's not just hang about. Hang on now. Hang on now. Shame on you if you're a Cowboys fan and you left Gallup out there because Gallup is Gallup was better than Cooper last year. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He absolutely was. He absolutely was. So I mean, that's a three headed monster right now. That's absurd. And they got Zeke coming out of the backfield. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's gonna get his forty million. Dak's gonna get his forty million. Oh, 100%. Now, I don't know if it's and, earned. And I think that the coaching is going to improve. Like, we're, we weren't yes. ever big time McCarthy fans, but I, I think there's no question uh, that he's a better coach. Been, I, li- I always liked McCarthy, okay? Yeah, but I, when he was at Green Bay, you weren't like, you weren't ringing the bell for him. I didn't think know? he was the problem. And, no, I, I will admit that. I will admit that. You never thought he was the problem. Um, I thought, I, I, thought I, think, the I think this is a coaching the improvement. front office and. You're 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 just working with somebody who's un, who has unbelievable talent, but is unworkable. Yeah, now and you're, I just you're right. You can't succeed in that environment. You just can't. Now you're you're 100 percent right, 100 percent right. All right, I think uh, is is there anything else we need to hit here? No, that's it. We went long. That's cool. Hey, that's it. We we've done that ever since. You know what? It's fine. While we're doing these draft recaps, we want to we want to take as long as possible to um, I'm not as long as possible, but we we want to take the the required time to actually go through these teams and discuss what they did. And I think it's uh, I think it's better. I think it's better. So uh, we appreciate Michael. We appreciate Matt. Just say no to drugs on Twitch. Uh, Darren McArdle jumping in on YouTube. All of you guys that have jumped in, Sir Dobby, the Brown Yeti, all you guys that have been coming in, we appreciate all of you. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you don't miss anything. Uh, Michael, one last comment said, "Not a Cowboy fan, Chris, but I'm a CSU, uh, CSU Ram, so I'm not forgetting Gallup over here. 100. percent There you, uh, go. There you go. So." But yeah, we appreciate all you guys jumping in every day. You, the chat makes the show, man. We appreciate it really you guys. Does. We do this. appreciate it. Yeah, it's this, fun for us. This is a lot of fun. We definitely appreciate you guys. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you share the show out with your buddies. Uh, if there is nothing else, we are out of here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and we will see you all again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. 
If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.